Originally extending into the state of Texas, Coahuila spans across more than 58,000 square miles, making it Mexico's largest state, which include both high elevation forests to the east, as well as a vast section of extremely arid deserts to the west, which I'll be focusing on primarily in today's video. As much as I love to visit greenhouses and backyard collections, nothing fulfills me more than getting to experience the majesty of these truly inspiring and peculiar plants in their natural environments. The vast open spaces devoid of humanity the deserts of the world have to offer me provide a necessary contrast to the often frustrating and mundane grinds of life in one of the world's largest cities like Los Angeles. E.O. Wilson describes this as biophilia, or the innate tendency to seek connections with nature, the urge to affiliate with other life forms. I really hope you enjoy this video that I've made for you. Please make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell and stay up to date on the latest videos and events that I'm doing. A huge thank you to today's sponsor, the Los Angeles Cactus and Succulent Society cultivates the study and enjoyment of cacti and succulent plants through educational programs and activities that promote the hobby within a community of fellow enthusiasts and among the greater public. Come on down and join our more than 200 members and uh, check out great speakers from all over the world. In fact, I actually just gave a talk on the video that you're about to watch. So I hope you enjoy. Check out the link in the description and I'll see you at the next meeting. What up, everybody? Welcome back to the Cactus Quest channel. I am your host, Hunter, and in today's episode, I'm walking through a particular place that is known to have multiple different types of cactus growing here that uh, are very interesting to me, interesting to a lot of the other people I know that like cactus, and I think they'll be quite interesting to you as well. So let's look around. Oh, oh found one, baby. Look at that. So as we're, as we're walking through here, what do we have? You have Echinocactus horizontalonius, which is uh, an absolutely beautiful stunner, an extremely slow growing plant. And you can see it's growing out of kind of a very loamy, rocky soil here. Absolutely beautiful. Let's see, let's see. What else? You've got Focaria splendens here. So now that this is the first, first cactus I've seen at the spot. You guys got to see it with me here, so let's take a look and see what else we can do. I'm laying down on the floor, you guys. When you find a plant like this, you just get down on the floor with it, and you admire it, and you let it know that it's beautiful, and that it's doing what it needs to do, and, and that you admire it, and that you want it to continue on, and spread its seeds, and make more, you know? That's what you gotta do sometimes. Bro, don't tell me what to do, bro. So, making my way over, I just got called over by Nick, but before, just point that out, there goes another one of those bad boys right there. Oh, there's another one of those bad boys right there. That one was not, that's not variegated, by the way. That's just sun, ooh. We got Thilo cactus. Ah, what thilo is this? So you have a thilo cactus here, paired nicely, right? You got the Echinocactus horizontalonius. I like to call it the horizontalonius monk. Another one there. I don't want to rush over to what he's going to show me because I might be stepping over gems, you know what I'm saying? So I got to walk careful. What do we got, dude? Huh? Ooh. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, I wanna um, thank you for pointing this out to me. So you, you are part of my first ever, first ever seeing Lofo in Habitat. So here we go, let's take a little peek. Growing down in here. Now while you guys got these things sitting in your greenhouse in full sun, this is how they actually get down, right? You see that? You got four, ooh, they're nice and squishy. You got four little buttons down there, hiding out, right? We'll definitely find some more. Oh, wait a second, hold on a second. Look at this, look at this. Whoa, hey, what do we got? We've got a nice older looking one hiding behind there. Another one here, one more here, one more here, and then this guy back over here, and look at that old man, little old man. So what we're looking at here, this is peyote, called Lafafra williamsi. 
And so we got some more over here. What do we got? Down under the bush, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, that little guy there. Very cool. So the what the what the peyotes are doing, this is they're not they don't have any kind of defensive spines, right? So they have no defensive spines. And the, the by the way, the defensive spines are not simply just for predators to not eat them. The the spines also provide protection from the harsh desert climate, so from the sun basically. So if the plants don't have spines, then they've got to come up with other methodologies and other things that they can use to help them get by out here. And so what peyote has is it has camouflage, has a contractile taproot that allows it to pull itself down into the soil and completely hide itself during times of drought to protect itself from the harsh sun, which its lack of spines isn't doing for it. Okay, so check it out. Look at this. This is, okay, so this is a prime example. You see how the contractile taproot, look at that. If I put the camera flat down with the surface, there's no plant there. I lift it up a little bit. Oh my God, it's about a half an inch recessed into the soil. Obviously it's been dry because this is soft and very squishy. It's like a nipple anus. And then it grows under these nurse plants, which enables it to get diffused lighting and be happy. Now, moving right along. Moving right along. The word peyote comes from the Aztecan language of Nahuatl, and peyotil is said to mean caterpillar. And perhaps at looking at these crests, maybe this is what the indigenous people saw that inspired them to name this sacred plant after a caterpillar. And oddly enough, lophophora is known to mean I bear crests in reference to the hairy tufts from Greek lophos crest and phoreo, I carry. Used for thousands of years, Lophophora williamsii has a number of alkaloids, most notably being mescaline, which has been isolated as being the active alkaloid within the plant, although there are seven others that have been detected. Dried and at times fresh buttons are eaten as part of sacred ceremonies where the plant is held on the level of a holy medicine or religious sacrament. Associated with the deer in Mexican mythology, pilgrimages are made annually to the areas where the peyote grows to be collected for ceremonial use. And according to Sir Richard Evans Schultes, anywhere from four to 12 buttons of the plant are consumed for healing and divination. And it's also reportedly used to treat everything from toothaches to arthritis. We've got some thilo cactus right here. Thilo cactus bicolor. Oh, not in flower. They've already flowered and uh, no seed. No seed, sadly. But oh, wait a minute. You see that? See what I mean by the camouflage? So this guy is in full sun, which you can even see here. He wasn't always. That's not how we started. So he's been put into full sun by circumstances, and that's why you can barely even see any of the photosynthetic flesh of the plant visible whatsoever. Hard to see, hard to see. You really gotta be looking for it. Tell us is an older one because it's got the tufts, and just from the, the size and the shape of the tubercles and everything, you can tell that's not a, it's not a super young plant. That's been here for some time. And if we keep moving around, you see, oh, look at this cluster, dude. So here you go. There's a ton of plants right here. Yeah, so it's been dry here, obviously, man. These are all sunken in. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Like that one looks dead over there, you know? Is it still alive? Yeah, it's alive. I can see green. Um, That's gotta be a gymno, right? Yeah, I'm thinking gymno cactus. I'm out here with Kelly Griffin, world famous aloe hybridizer, plant explorer, and uh, he is trying to take a look at that. Some died. Uh, hold on. Don't tell me. Let me have a seat. Let me have a seat with my friend here. This is my friend here. So that's a Luchenbergia principis. One of the most bizarre, they call it the agave cactus. And you can kind of tell why. It doesn't quite look like your typical cactus. And this is obviously an incredible incredibly old. At once, it was a five-headed specimen. As you can see here, one of the heads has uh, gone kaput, and so it is now left as a four-headed specimen surrounded by uh, uh, the uh, shin dagger, Luchigia. And then if you look here, man, these things are just radical. There's another one of the Horizontalonias. This is a 
six headed looking for it, yeah. Six? Oh lord. Look at that. How cool. How cool. Wow man. Crest quest. There you go, baby. We got the crest. Peyote crest. Oh, it's so soft. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Are you going to blow it? Oh! Mm -hmm. ah, ah. <coughs> oh don't, don't go kiss it. Blow it. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. But you know what I'm talking about? Look at that. There's another one right there. Look at the beautiful blue epidermis. Oh, God. Oh, my God. So this is, when I talk about hard-grown plants, nature does it automatically. And it's always the battle that I have with myself. Do I hard grow my plants or do I pump them up? Bro, look, they're everywhere. Sunk in here, there, triplicate. Look at those little babies. Huh? Oh, yeah. There's another one there. Now, we got to be very careful. I might be stepping on Cachibianus and God knows whatever else. We got one, two, Three. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Look, four with a little offset. Five, six. So right now we're cruising through San Antonio de las Alazanas on our way to the second uh, Agave Montana locality. I'm very tired. This is like uh, the day after you got home from the hospital after you had a baby tired, you know? We're at about uh, 7,500 feet elevation in uh, Coahuila. Mexico and I have discovered I believe that is a Turbini Carpus formally classified as Gymnocactus. I want to say Horopilus but I'm not a hundred percent sure if I saw it in flower that would give me a better indicator. Maybe I'll find some more plants around here and it's growing out of limestone. We're up in the mountains. It's the only cactus so far. I don't even see a Puntias up here. You got a lot of Dazzlerian. You got Talansia. Growing on some of the trees, you've got some yuccas, some agaves, things like that. There's the pear. But as you can see, you've got one, two, three little seedlings. The seedlings are always the, I mean, they're always the prettiest, are they not? And then four, five, six, seven, eight. And you see over there, there's a big ugly one. Am I doing it? I'm just doc I'm documenting the experience, Kelly. Yeah. That's it. We're cruising. Cruising for a bruising. We, we got the first site under the belt, and uh, we were looking for Agave Montana, correct? I present to you a variegated Agave Gentryi, and this is, uh, this is up here in the mountains in Coahuila. So now we've got one variegate, so the next thing to find will be a crest. Unsuccessfully, we may have potentially found a possible, a weak possible, but it was a little too far of a hike. To a weak vehicle. Yeah, yeah, we got this small wheeled Nissan. However, uh, it wasn't a complete total loss because I did get to see a uh, small population of, I, I don't even want to call, I know it's technically Turbini Carpus, but I don't know. I don't know, I'm kind of a purist. It's kind of like how you say like, okay, like those are Calvin Klein jeans. Really, did you buy them at Costco? Yeah, I bought them at Costco. They're, those are not Calvin, they may have the CK on the back of them, but those are not Calvin Klein jeans, they're just not. And so that was technically a Turbini Carpus. But to me, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in Gymnocactus. It was kind of interesting to see how it grows in the mountains, completely in what I would call a uh, forest. Pine juniper. Pine juniper forest. Yeah. So, you know, it's always every time I see a plant in habitat, and even sometimes when I see plants in cultivation, I, you always learn more about them. And whatever I thought I knew about them, turns out 
there's more to the story, or I was completely wrong. So I like the I like the learning process. Well, it's not caught you be honest, but you have Pokeria Splendens, and then you have uh, uh, this is absolutely the worst Apuntia in the game. You see these in cultivation offered, and they look so soft. They look like they're spineless, but they are not spineless. Those little mounds are uh, hundreds of tiny, microscopic, fiberglass-like spines called glockids. And glockids' number one mission is, in life is to fuck your shit up. And that's what they do, and they do it well. They get in your skin, and they stay there. They stay there for months. They turn into blisters. The blisters pus. It is disgusting. Don't touch that. You shouldn't buy that plant. You shouldn't own that plant if you have kids. This is a public service announcement. Heed the message. Now, one of the other cool things that you have grown out here is you have this Jatropha species, and it's popping up everywhere. But right now, it's like kind of surrounding this Apuntia. And uh, now I don't know what Jatropha this is. I'll tell you, it's not a, it's not particularly the most uh, attractive. Oh my God! Oh, f f oh shit! Shit! Ah! Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, that wasn't in my foot. That wasn't in my foot. That's not in my foot. Oh, God. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, only one of those was poking into the foot. Oh, man. It was this little guy. That's the bastard that did it to me. Now, I was oogling before I was viciously attacked. I was oogling this. It's clumping. It's clumps or clumping. Epithelantha. Oh, yeah, baby. Micro Maris. Not, nothing too micro about that Maris. We got the last little bit of light here. So, sun is setting. It is absolute. It's looking. We got this beautiful folk area here. Right? It's absolute. It's just stunning. Silent. All you hear is the wind the desert. That's it. But right here, you've got more beautiful clumps. Look at, I mean, just look at how glorious this is of Epilantha micromeris. Right? So you have another one right there. And uh, just to kind of show you exactly how these things are growing, they're growing right with Horizanthalonius. And you've kind of got them everywhere. The uh, probably the most prominent cactus at this site has been Horizanthalonius, while the cactus that we have been looking for has been Aeriocorpus cachubianus, and we have not been able to find it. But that's it's okay. So we got another crest found on the trip. This time it's Epithelantha micromeris. Not too shabby, I would say. Not too shabby, I would say. Five heads, one rotted. Oh, look, here's another big Epithelantha. Wow, they're everywhere right here. Here's another epithelantha growing in between the jatrophas. Dude, just tons of heads, man. Tons of heads. After the first day, we headed into town, got our hotel, got some dinner, went to bed so we could get ready to go at it again. It's going to be a good one today. Well, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. We've got uh, Sclerocactus inconatus, and uh, some people call this glandula cactus, depending on who you talk to. Uh, Unconatus, I actually have a couple of these. Uh, my friend Tony grows these from seed. Really cool to see them here in Habitat. That is not what we're looking for though. We're looking for something else. So here you go. Aerocarpus physaratus, the living rock. And it's fucking hard as an absolute rock right here. I think this is a pretty calcium rich soil. I really, this terrain is absolutely beautiful. And you can see, I mean, my eyes, I know what I'm looking for, but I mean, that thing is completely camouflaged and sun's rising. It's gonna sit in full sun all day. And if you see, this is what the plants look like in the desert. So if somebody tries to sell you one that looks like that, you can be rest assured it's a field collected plant. And, uh, you know, they look, honestly, they look 10 times better in cultivation. Let's see what else we can find. Uh, 
I want to say that's an Echinocereus, but I'm not too familiar. I didn't do a lot of research on the different species of Echinocereus growing down here. So you have Astrophytum Capricorn variety Nivium, and at this point in this plant's life, it is completely enormous, not a single spine. And next to it, you have the resurrection fern here. Super dry, although it looks like it might have gotten just a little, maybe a little moisture, because it seems like it's trying to wake up. So perfect example, you saw the other one had no spines. This one has completely spined out already. It's about three or four times bigger. When they're younger plants here in the wild, they actually will be essentially enormous until a certain point. And you can see it's got new growth. So the spines are actually actively growing, which is, uh, that's a good sign. It's a good sign. So we found two. That means there's more here. At least that's what I wanted to mean. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. See, you see, uh, no, this is agave lechugia, but you can see the, the rhizome popping out right there. If I had been hiking up, I would probably not have seen it. Because if you look this way, you don't see it at all. And then boom, there it is, right? This is kind of hidden under this. But you see exactly what I'm talking about, where the younger plants have no spines whatsoever, and then the older plants just really start to kind of disappear into the background. Yes, another. See now, that, I would start going, I would start to say that this is, uh, this is Areocarpus fissuratus, and I would, uh, Kelly said that he thinks these are Lloydii. I would, I would give that this is an intermediate form. So there's the plant. You can see, it's actually, it's gonna get some uh, morning, morning diffused lighting, but it's gonna, gonna have a pretty intense midday blast of sun there. That's fucking Lloyd. That is, oh shit, that is, okay. That's Lloyd. Oh yeah, baby. Woo! This is absolutely straight. Lloydia right there. Any seed pods in there? No, no seed pods. Look at that. Let me fluff them up. Let me fluff them up a little bit. Growing right above it, you've got two little stressed astrophytums, and then popping out, you've got a little, what I believe is an Echinocereus emerging as a seedling. Oh Lord, there's something nice right here. Oh. God, who doesn't love a good purple? Areocarpus. Look at the fatness. Look how stacked up it is. Oh. So when you see when you see a plant again, it looks distressed. It's got a bunch of dried, dead tubercles that somebody's trying to sell you. It's got some weird, uh, odd-shaped, you know, uh, taproot that looks like it was growing in the cracks of rocks. That's how you know it's a collected plant. You know. Hold on, I gotta kiss it. Oh yeah. Gotta kiss it. So you got one between the rocks, another one here, and even though I know what these look like and they're, uh, and I'm looking for them, I actually found this because I was looking at that, and then I called him over to look at this, and he said, "Did you notice that?" So the camouflage is uh, absolutely working. It's working and it's working well. Because I said, "Look, if you look here." Somebody's been eating these things. Somebody, somebody took a bite out of it. Luckily, they decided they didn't like it because it's a pretty plant and I'd rather have it here. Dead ass. Look, guys, dead ass. We got a dead astrophytum. It even still has the trichomes on it. How cool is that? I mean, I'm sorry to see him go, you know? But uh, it's cool to see the, the way of the desert. Oh, here's another one. There's a nice one there. Look at that big boy with black spines. Wow. Yes. So if you look at this, uh, uh, look at this Seriocarpus right here, you notice that it's like encased. And these are still very, very hard, but those are dried and dead tubercles. So if I had to guess, I would say that more likely what happened is that it went through some severe drought. It was obviously a much bigger plant and it had some years of severe, severe drought and uh, it lost, it let part of itself die off 
in order to keep its growing meristem and to keep itself alive, and then it bounced back. So pro tip, get a light reflector so you can get the good shots. <laughs> Now this is very exciting. There's a big one up there. You got this little guy here. Astrophytum coelens. I mean, that is just, wow. That is massive. I'd say it's a foot long at least. And look at the aerials as they extend down the ridges. You have one, two, three, four, five flowers from here. You can see, it looks like it's actually getting ready to Looks like it's getting ready to produce another flower. And then you have the agave, of course, the agave lechuguilla. And look at this. You got little melons, little desert melons. You've got the euphorbia, and then you got a beautiful little clump of epithelantha. Um, it's probably micromeris, but I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. And then if you come over here, you've got this Apuntia with a bunch of rocks at the base. But if you notice, one of them is not a rock. It's a nice chunky Astrophytum. And you notice, I don't see any mealy bugs on any of these, you know? Kind of an interesting little fact. So Astrophytum coelens, while appearing quite similar morphologically to Myriostigma, the consistent differences in flower, fruit, seed, embryo, and trichomes permit botanists and taxonomists alike to distinguish coelens as its own species. All right, so look at this guy. We just came across, we're heading down the hill, right as we're getting ready to leave the spot. And we found this uh, six million headed uh, epithelantha. And if you take a look there, that main head, that's right. It's got a frown because it's cresting. But we're gonna turn that frown upside down, right? <laughs> Damn, dude, that is fucking, that is really, really, really pretty. That's legit. Look at the base of the Akatia right there. There's six more, five more. Episode, I'm standing on these vertical limestone cliff uh, rock walls basically on just this little outcrop here where these hectia are growing and if you look down oh it's a little bit of a drop the roads down there but if you look up here though all right take a look at that that is agave victoria regine and my goodness it's the agave that looks like it was painted Absolutely stunning. This is an extremely popular agave that you see in cultivation everywhere. And it is extremely difficult to reach because it grows on these very, very high and kind of treacherous limestone cliffs. And at the particular place where we are, you have a couple of different forms. So you've got the single solitary larger plant growing there. But if you look right here in the crack of this rock, you've got the Swobidae form, which is a smaller, more compact clumping form. And uh, both stunningly beautiful plants. Both uh, very easy to grow as well and plentiful in cultivation. So a lot of these have been poached. I don't think people are still poaching them though. I really hope they're not, because uh, there's truly no need. But let's just take another look at that puppy. All right, gorgeous. And if you look, they're all along the cliff faces here. There's another larger one there. There's a few more there. So I'm gonna keep going up the mountain here and I'm gonna to try to uh, find some better spots for you guys. All right, so we're, we're at another locality and uh, you have Victoria Regina occurring, but it's occurring much higher up. And frankly, it's a little bit difficult for me to reach. However, we do have a lot of these cool little guys, so I'll show you. And they're populating every little nook and cranny. So if we come over here, you can see you got that one there, and then you've got that big, big boy right there. And then you've got these sitting in the, uh, that looks, I mean, that honestly just looks kind of like a uh, soil crust, and it is. 
And so when this all gets rained on, this all comes back to life and starts to photosynthesize again. Cryptobiotic soil crust. Look at those little guys sticking out there. And you got that clump there. Put some light on it for you. A button-like geophytic cactus, Lophophora freakii, also known as the false peyote due to its extremely low mescaline content, is known to occur in two different types of habitats and is endemic to the state of Coila. Occasionally referred to as a subspecies of diffusa, Frickii, being self-sterile, is not known to be able to hybridize with others in the genus. It is my favorite personally, and that's not just because it's the only Lophophora with fragrant flowers, but rather a preference for the larger sized plant with more ribs, and in my short experience, the Frickii's tend to be more glaucous blue and often chalky. Many of these plants were growing fully exposed to sun and appear to have a waxy coating similar to Copiapoa cinerea, albeit less intense, of course. Give you kind of a little peek behind the window there. See some of that foot, that uh, that root, which is basically a subterranean stem. That is actually the tuber is really subterranean stem. It's actually not uh, not the root. It's kind of a misconception, I guess. You know, splitting hairs, but whatever. But you can kind of see the whole plant here, and these are all all, all of these are old. It's just there. I think that's it's the uh, it's the substrate that is limiting their ability to get big and giant because even the bigger clumps are still small-headed plants man i could have honestly stayed at this spot all day but yet the time was limited so we had to move on it was hard to say bye to these plants though look loaf split in habitat too not just in your collection so don't worry Except these are like Joshua trees on steroids. Or Joshua trees wearing high heels. They're just bigger. Who's a good if Yucca filifera. It's been a long couple of years. They're good if you saute them. Cook them and like cook them with your eggs. That is. No, not that one, maybe. <laughs> I love this oh, that was fucking bitter. All right, I'm coming to you from all fours here. So I was, I was at first, I was noticing this beautiful uh, white lichen here. You know, it almost, if you saw the video I did with Ali at the aquarium shop with all the coral, kind of reminds me of that. But uh, another cool little find here, Manfreda. Not 100% sure of the species. We think it's, what is it now? Undulata, I think. Undulata, possibly, but we're not 100% positive. But isn't that, isn't that a pretty little plant with that like, I mean, it's like an aqua teal colored leaf with purple striations and dotting. That's really pretty. And so Manfreda is what they hybridized with agaves to come up with mangaves. So there you go. And this is growing uh, right here at the base of this, I think, is this mesquite? I think it's mesquite. I'm not 100% sure. But, uh, and then you've got this Echinoceris here as well. And there's another little Manfreda there. So if you take a look, you got Manfreda with the little ripply leaves. And then you got an Echeveria in bud right behind it. Pretty cool. How you doing, little buddy? Can we keep them? Dude, oh my god, bro. You know, driving away from this fucking guy is going to be really hard. Oh my gosh, can I bring him on the plane? Whoa. A little puffer. What are you doing out here, buddy? It's alright. It's alright, little fella. It's alright. Yeah. We are here at uh, 79 hundred feet in the mountains of Zacatecas and uh, I haven't seen any ferro cactus on this trip yet until just now and now this isn't this isn't the prettiest version of it but that is a pretty big freaking clump that looks like it's been through some shit of ferro cactus pilosus 
which is a beautiful plant. They grow quite tall. Let's step over this little barbed wire here. Okay, so you got one there. I'm sure I'll see some. Now this looks similar to Ferrocactus cylindraceus in some ways, but its growth habit is much different. Uh, and its spines are a lot different. This one doesn't have, they've got these kind of like thin, uh, filiferous kind of spines actually. And uh, they make for an absolutely beautiful, beautiful plant. Now this here, this is a beautiful pilosis. And uh, it's growing a little high up on this cliff here, but you can really see what I'm talking about with the filiferous kind of like hairy spines. The radial spines are like, almost like hair on this plant. And you can see it's gone to seed. Seed pods are beautiful on this plant as well. So it almost looks like little red and yellow scales. And this is, this is a pretty mature plant, although it's got feet left. These will get taller than me, okay? I'm not a super tall guy, but I'm 5'9". These will get over six feet, not by much, but a little bit. And uh, they tend to form little colonies where they clump and they have offsets. Now, the spines are also quite red. Just a, a real stunner of a plant. And uh, it was a little difficult to get to, but uh, you know, I definitely wanted to come up here and take a look at it because it is a real beauty. So, I don't know if I'm gonna get to this platycanthus over there. I think I'm gonna hold off and try to find some that are a little more accessible. God, Zacatecas, you are beautiful. Look at these beautiful Fulcaria splendens. Those root masses are fucking epic. And then look at that. Echinocactus platyacanthus. Golly. Wow. I'm growing these from seed. The ones I'm growing from seed are tiny. I have no idea how old that is, but um, at based, oh, look at, look at, look at. Blue, 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 blue. So you've got the horizontaloni. Ooh, look at this little baby. Oh, wow, look at that, so pretty. Gosh, these are pretty ones. And then right next to it, little baby platyacanthus. Okay, I have just entered heaven, okay? I was admiring the uh, absolutely stunner of a specimen here, but then I said, what? That doesn't look exactly like a, no, it's not Horizontalonius. It is not, that is Thelocactus mm -hmm. hexadrophorus. Beautiful, holy hell, dude, I fucking love this plant. Golly, how cool is that? But let's take a look at this beautiful pilosis. Whoa, whoa. So we saw the uh, smaller one earlier, and as, oh look it, it's getting ready to flower. Oh no, 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 no. Oh yeah, it is flowering. It is gonna flower. You just found the areocarpus. Oh. Oh. Oh yes. So, uh, you know, I gotta tell you, Mexico to me is a place where I come and I just am absolutely set free. Um, I'm standing at a place, this is like, I love Thelocactus, I love Areocarpus. And here, you've got one single Areocarpus retusus, you've got two Thelocactus hexadrophorus, and then the gratitude that fills my heart when I look down and I see something like that is almost ineffable but I'll do my best to explain. The fascination and the curiosities that are stoked when I'm walking through a habitat like this, looking at the plants that I so much love and adore is really hard to explain. Hey guys, did you notice that the third head on this is fucking cresting? Yes. Holy hell. Anyway, 
my heart and soul are just filled, filled with so much joy and gratitude right now. I can't even explain it. I hope you guys enjoy this. And make sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> real, real badass plant. Look at this thing. This is Echinocactus platyacanthus. And, I mean, just look at that wool. Like the amount of woolly trichomes that are created on this plant are something else. I have never seen this plant in the wild. It's been on my bucket list for quite some time. And uh, I gotta tell you, to know that this is a small one is still, that's, I mean, it is pretty damn fascinating. These plants at their biggest, they can grow to be the size of a Volkswagen bug, literally as big around as both of these and taller than myself. Um, and I don't know exactly what state they grow in, but they, they, uh, they appear, look, this one's filled with, filled with seed. Gosh, what a beautiful plant. Look at that. Damn near camouflaged. Second one. Stand up, it's gone. Come back down. Oh, there it is. Stand up, it's gone. Low hex right there. And then right here. Areocarpus retusus. Mm, 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 mm. Right here you've got the, the hexadrophorus, right? Really pretty spines on that one too, by the way. But if you notice, there's another plant right here. You see it? There's an areocarpus here. Can you see it? Wow. Right there. Look at that. 15 years old. Look, look at that, dude. That is so fucking cool. And then look at that. Little baby hex. One, two, three, four. Five heads. Man. They're hard as a rock. It's really cool to see these and the, see seedlings. And then I'm looking at some of these plants. There's another eight header over here and it's got a lot of variation. Well, for the first stop of the day, it has been an absolute and total success. Uh, Areocarpus retusus pectinatus, possibly another variant. They look like a, plants that had different features a couple of different places. And then Thelocactus, oh yeah. Thank you to everybody that tuned in and watched the video all the way through. I appreciate everybody that follows me on Instagram and buys plants or pots and shows up to the events. I mean, y'all make everything I'm doing possible. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And a, a huge thank you goes to the Los Angeles Cactus and Succulent Society for sponsoring the video. Make sure you check out the link in the description and become a member. I just gave a talk on the very trip that I just showed you guys in this video uh, at their local club meeting. Uh, it's a lot of fun, a great way to get connected with like-minded people, and I highly recommend it. Adios.